Welcome to Off Watch, a podcast by the Ocean Race. You join us at the start of season two of Off Watch. We've already had 34 incredible stories from those people at the heart of the race, and we're going to be looking ahead to hearing more tales from those people who matter. And we're going to start off with something pretty special. Kevin Escoffier, a member of Dongfong Race Team in the last two editions and a winner of the Ocean Race, turned his hand to solo sailing and has got an incredible adventure to retell from this edition of the Vendee Globe. The last edition of the Ocean Race was memorable for many reasons, but the finish with three teams all vying for overall victory was something special. Kevin Escoffier was part of Dongfong race team and they managed in the final miles to edge out and take the trophy in a spectacular finish. After claiming victory in a race around the world for teams, Kevin then turned his attention to doing the same, but this time solo. So in 2018, he took control of PRB, a 10-year-old vessel, but with two years to transfer his skills into solo sailing. But with some strong results, a second in the Transat Jacques Vab and a second in the Rolex Fastnet, he entered the 2020 Vendee Globe with high hopes and for good reasons. Kevin, thank you very much um, for talking to us today. There is so much that obviously I can't wait to ask you about from the technology of the Amokas and of course your experience in the last Vendee Globe. But before I do that, can I just say that on behalf of everybody, it is fantastic to see you safe and well. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm happy to, uh, to, to, to be back in Lom and uh, happy to, to be working uh, for the future and uh, to, to, get, uh, to, to be back on the, on the water as soon as possible and to have a new uh, PRB boat uh, for the future as well. Now, let me ask you about that in, in just a moment. But first of all, can I just put you back to The Hague? and the finish in 2018 for Dongfong race team and for yourself. This was the second edition. So this is six years, maybe eight years of hard work. Two of them spent on the water racing. When you finish an event like that and when you win, what are the thoughts going through your mind? It's pretty difficult because uh, um, what I can tell is uh, uh, all, all the time when I come back on land after a race, you know, I, I'm always split, uh, split in between uh, being sad of uh, leaving the, the, the sea and leaving the race because I, 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 I definitely love being at sea. I, I love being racing against uh, other boats and always know I'm, I'm a bit hesitating between being happy to, to, to be back in London and to finish the race and, and being sad of of not being racing anymore. But uh, definitely the, the, this time, the, the one you're, you're talking about, um, when, when, when we've seen, when we've discovered, I, I, I should say, uh, because we definitely, since uh, underwater, we hadn't any news from uh, other boats uh, since uh, the, the ranking were only every four hours, I think. Uh, the, we, we, we've discovered that uh, we we will win the Volvo. We will uh, we will win the Volvo. Sorry, uh, when we've seen uh, the uh, the helicopter coming for us, and if 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 the helicopter is coming for us, I think we should be first. And then the helicopter when when he left us, instead of going forward, he, he went 90 degrees of the boat. And this time we were quite sure that we 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 were winning the Volvo and. Yeah, this time, it's not very often, but this time I was very happy to come back and launch. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it was an incredible emotional journey, I'm sure. How quickly then, like you say, you know, you miss being on the water. How quickly did you think, right, what's next? What can I do next? Not sure, because uh, I, I went back working for, for, for a multi hull a flying one, uh, for Banque Populaire, and uh, I've always been working. You know, I took only one, one month, one month of uh, of, uh, of holidays with uh, family, because as you said, it's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of uh, of a lot of energy uh, from your your family uh, on shore. Um, uh, kids, obviously, but you know, uh, young 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 kids are are, are always uh, happy to go around the world. Uh, my my wife that uh, has a company as a and uh, that has been uh, following me around the world with the one uh, one and a half year old uh, daughter. It was 
pretty difficult for her. And I think it was more holidays for her than than for me. And I've been directly, I, I, I don't like to be not doing anything. I prefer to work than being in holiday. So as soon as uh, after one month after the Volvo, I've been back on the water on a, on a uh, 32 meters long uh, multi hull. And but I, I think I, I was missing something. And that's the moment I've been uh, really looking forward to, to go for single handed. Uh, since in France, um, Volvo is not that it's not like uh, like uh, a New Zealand, like uh, US or England, where, where the Volvo, it's, it's, it's a massive event. In France, obviously, Volvo Ocean Rise is a massive event, but not compared to Vendée Globe. V Vendée Globe in France, that is the biggest uh, thing when, when you're selling. And, and I, I was wondering, what should I do? What should I do? I, I love, uh, I, I definitely love being competing uh, full crew because you're able to push a boat at 100% and I, I'm a mechanical engineer and obviously I like to push things at, at, at the max they are, uh, they are able to do but I, I would have I would have have regrets if I, uh, if I, if I haven't done any uh, single-handed races and when I was wondering when I was looking forward to do that uh, Vincent Rioux called me and it was it was in November November uh, 2018 uh, and he called me and it, yeah, he told me, yes, I want to stop. Uh, I want to stop with PRB. Do you want to get, uh, to get the project back to you and to do single handed? Uh, I, I, I took five minutes, maybe, maybe two, <laughs> maybe two. And I said, yes. And one week after, one week after he, he called me back and tell me, okay, it's done. Uh, I've been discussing with the boss of PRB and you'll be the next uh, skipper. So I, I think I'm pretty, if I'm not pretty, I'm very lucky. I've got a, uh, in French, we say, we say a, a nice uh, star above me. I've got a star above me, you know, that uh, helped me going forward. And uh, in, yeah, just after the Volvo, uh, I, I've been going, I was looking forward to do that. And uh, someone just offered me something just great to, to go for the Vendée Globe 2020. And I imagine something like PRB as well. It, it, it's a unique partnership. I think a lot of people who are not professional athletes assume that it's always done with uh, a sailor has an idea, has a dream. I want to do this challenge. Now I must go and find a sponsor. But of course, PRB is a race team um, that exists. It's, it's more than just the sailor at its heart. It must be a very different relationship. And, uh, and of course, for, for you, PRB has been in the Vendée since 92. You would have been 12 years old. The first Vendée, since the first Vendée. Yeah. So when you were growing up, did you were you aware of this team that now you're the skipper? I mean, obviously, and it's not only PRB. It's PR, PRB. It's part of of the of the French sailing history, uh, like like the Vendée Globe is, and PRB is part of the. Is, they've been on all editions of the of the of the Vendée Globe, and uh, they, they've with uh, with famous names like Isabelle Autissier, one of the first women. To compete in uh, in uh, single-handed races, the first woman woman to 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 finish uh, uh, around the world uh, single-handed race, um, Michel Desjoyeaux, that have been competing with Mafre on the 2014 uh, Volvo, and also won the Whitbread before that. Uh, Vincent Rioux. Enfin, when you look at these names, you know you. I, 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 for me, it was just a dream. The, the, let me talk to you then about the, t the technology then for the, for the Amoka 60s. This is going to be a boat that we are going to see a lot in the ocean race and the next edition and future editions as well. Um, there's been a lot of talk about how different the Amoka is from the, the 65. So it wasn't very long after stepping off Dongfeng race team, a VO65, onto the Amoka. I mean, from my understanding, just the way that the boat sails through the water is very different indeed. What, what was your impression? No, 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 you're, you're right saying, saying that, you're very right. But it's still a boat. It, it's still a boat. And, and no, no, it's, it's definitely the, the truth. Uh, I've been sailing on multi hulls I, I, I've been doing around the world on a 40 meters multi hulls I've been doing transatlantic on 30, on uh, 18 multi hulls on 18 meters. Uh, on 15 meters, multi 
but it's still selling you know when, when you look uh, when, when you look at a sale uh, depending on the win you have to trim the sales you have to go fast you've got the same uh, uh, people around you so it's fighting on the water <clears throat> but uh, definitely it's it's not as comfortable today if i had to to choose or not to choose a boat <laughs> for for the comfort on the boat it would be the imoka imoka when you've got a multi hull it's pretty fast but it's narrow uh, hulls so when you go through a wave, it's it's okay, uh, and and sometimes since you're flying uh, quite high on the water, uh, you you don't hit the little waves, and w when you are on the mono hull, since the the hull is pretty wide and flat, you hit the water pretty pretty pr pretty badly, and uh, and you still very fast. We we now with the foils we are sailing when you go when you go for a cold front for example. Um, before that, we are going not fully upwind, you know, not VMG upwind. I don't know if it's too technical, but no. we're not going uh, VMG upwind, but 55, 60, 60 degrees to an angle. Now with the foils, we are so fast going down that we go with the, with the mono hull at 70, 75, even 80 degrees to an angle sometimes at 20, 23, 24 knots. So when you've got four or five meters of sea, you, you still go at 23 knots. And it's just amazing how you jump and everything, but it's pretty uncomfortable and uh, you have to grab on. We, uh, For example, when I stack inside the boat, I've got a helmet and- oh, Why? Yes, but uh, again, when you go single-ended, um, the, the hardest uh, physical thing I've done uh, for sailing was the Volvo, because it's 30 days, 100% stacking, uh, uh, peeling, and, but uh, single indeed, it's more in the head. When, when you do that, if you if you don't want to slow down, when when you're jumping jumping alone, you know, on the on the on the on the, on the, on the water like that, it's more in the in the head than uh, for the for the. Even if you, you you need to be quite well not to, to break something, if you don't want to to break a rib, but uh, uh, it's more in the head than uh, for the body. What about the the waves. I mean, you mentioned that you're, you know, you're riding above them. You have a different way of sort of sailing with them. The the reason that I'm interested in this is that I, I spoke to One K for the last season of this this uh, off watch for the interviews, and uh, he was saying that something that surprised him was the angle of the boat on the foils to the waves was critical. And if the waves were coming at slightly different angle, the the weight and the ballast had to be completely different. Is do you agree with that? Yes, definitely, definitely. And we don't c compare to multi hull uh, where, where the heel is pretty stable. On the on, on the mono hull, you change the heel all the time. I mean, for example, if you if you if you jump a wave. The foil get out of the water. You, you don't have writing moment anymore. The, the boat uh, just heal much more. Then you don't have the same angle on the on the foil, and it's not working anymore. So, and that's also why, if if you've been uh, following the, the the Vendée Globe closely, we've seen that the foiler um, downwind were not that fast. Yeah. Hugo Boss, uh, Alex Thompson uh, have been uh, have been saying before the start that he he, he, he built he designed. A boat around uh, VMG downwind. Sadly, we haven't we haven't seen if the if the C shaped foil and, and the hull he had done with with VPLP was a good one. But what is sure what is sure is that we haven't found uh, the, the right foils for downwind VMG. After that upwind reaching, we can we can see that the foiler is just amazing. It's sometimes it's five, four knots faster than, than the boat uh, we, 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 without foils. Even on PRB, it was 2018 foils. And we can see that sometimes a PVR, a Charal, uh, they, they were three knots faster than me. So we, we are, you know, each, each year we will, we, will, we will gain one knot, two knots. It's just amazing. It's, it's just the start of the foiling, gen, of the foiling design for the, for the monohulls. So, it, it, yeah, it sounds like for the next edition of the Ocean Race, where we're going to have the 65s and we're going to have the foiling of mockers, it, it, we've got, <laughs> you know, as fans, you've got the one design match boats. And then, like you say, there's so much development still to happen in the in the mockers. So 
l- l- let me ask you then about the the Vendée Globe and this last uh, last edition. Obviously, we've just seen the finish, but let's go to the thirtieth of November with you on board PRB, and uh, you're doing you're doing well. You know, this is uh, your third place. I think you're eight hundred or so miles southwest of Cape Town. Um, yeah, so a bit less, I think, maybe yeah, six. But maybe you're not clo- you're not close to land, and I think correct me if I'm wrong, but in the last twenty four hours beforehand, you had a the best run of the whole fleet in twenty four hours. You know, you were performing really well. Can you tell us what the um, what was the conditions like at that moment, just before everything changed? Oh, just to to explain. Why I was the fastest? It's uh, for me. It was quite easy. I, uh, for me, I was not pushing on the boat, but uh, um, I, I, I was uh, maybe fifth before that, I think. And I definitely I wanted to be um, before to go in the south. I, I, I didn't want to, to to be to have to push hard in the south. So for me, it was flat sea. It was quite nice uh, the, the, the 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 night before. So I've been pushing. I've been pushing more than the other, but for me it was still okay. It was I, I, I was not 105 percent of the of the polar. You know, it was something like 90, 95. So I was not pushing that much. But in the ID for me, it was to get at uh, at uh, um, good hope uh, in to be yes in the top three. So that after that I, I would have been able to to decide uh, where I wanted to put the how to push the boat in the south. So that's that's why I, I've been pushing a bit, but not that much. And it was we, we knew that uh, the sea state and the wind was increasing. Uh, we when when I broke, I was 28, uh, 30 knots of wind with five meters uh, sea state. Um, quite not not a good sea state, you know. It was five meters, but uh, with nine I think nine second periods or something that is uh, short, what we call a short sea state. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same word in English, but in French we say short sea state. The, the waves were quite close from each other. And um, I just felt my my, my Jenneker I had, and maybe I think that's why I was faster than the others on the on the on the previous uh, 24 hours. And um, I felt it, and I was G2 and two reefs in in the main, and uh, I was inside, and I had uh, an alarm on the on the wind, and uh, the wind was increasing. So um, the alarm I think was like 31 or 32 knots of wind. And uh, the, the 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 alarm uh, woke me up, so I went on the deck. But no rush. No, it was not uh, it was not um, uh, a structure or dangerous alarm. It was just an alarm to go and have to trim the sails on on on, on the deck. And this is this is an alarm that you know you set. You you decide. Okay, wake me up if the wind increases or swings. Yeah. So it's not a necessarily a dangerous alarm. It might be tactical. No, no. I've got I've got alarms on on the foils or on the on the rig that are. Um, Let's say stru- structural, uh, yeah, so dangerous alarms, as as you as you said. But this one, I can set uh, them up uh, as as I want on, uh, on 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 the computer on the software. I can put, you know, the the true wind direction, the true wind angle, the heading, whatever I want. I can put it, and it was not just for a, a performance, a performance alarm uh, to to know when I uh, when I have to trim the the boat. So I went uh, I, I went outside, and I was starting to trim the boat. And uh, then I've seen big wave, and the boat start to 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 surf the wave. So and so that's a foiler. So there is 30 knots. So when you when you surf a wave, it's 27, 28, 29, 30 knots. And I see the boat, you know, going going inside the the wave, but it's it's 30 knots. It's not uh, on on a mono hull. You do 30 knots. I've done that uh, uh, plenty of times. So I was on the deck, pretty pretty cool. And uh, I, I feel the boat uh, quite. Um, how do you say? Uh, how could I say that in, uh, in English? But uh, uh, soft. Yeah, let's say soft. I, I I feel the boat soft. So I just look. Uh, I just look up because uh, usually when you, you when you feel the boat soft like that, it's more the, the mast. And I just look up to see the mast. Maybe uh, you know a runner that uh, breaks because when you go inside the waves, you've got uh, a deceleration that is quite. And it's not the mast, so I look forward and I can see the the hull, uh, you know, uh, folding, folding, uh, folding at 90 degrees. And I put, and for me, it's just a dream, you know. For me, it's say no, it's not possible, it's not possible. So I put the head in the in the hatch, and I see, I, I check inside, and I see the water going 
uh, going inside the boat. So that's what that was uh, the start of uh, of twelve hours that were that were not pretty uh, pretty good. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to wrap my brains as to I, anybody else that I've I've ever heard of where a boat has folded in in half i mean like you say how how quickly when that happened and you see the water how quickly did your reactions kick in and you went okay this is serious i have to do something how how fast did you manage to get control uh it's uh it's uh maybe two seconds three seconds no no i've been very quick as soon as I've seen the water going inside inside the boat, I knew uh, what I've seen outside was uh, was real, and I knew uh, the, the boat. Uh, as, as soon as you've got the boat broken into, so the first thing I jumped inside, I took my um, TPS, what we call TPS in France. It's a survival suit yeah. uh, in in neoprene, a uh, watertight one, a watertight one. So it's a, and it's a, a mandatory uh, survival suit. Uh, every single skipper on the Vendée Globe. Uh, must have on board, and me, I was not stacking it. Uh, far. I, it was stacked, but always on the same place. So it was, you, you know, you've got plenty of bags with food, security stuff, everything, with the spare, spares, spares, uh, uh, spares uh, uh, of everything. And um, uh, the first bag, the, of, uh, the last bag, I was stacking. So the first bag forward of the of the stack uh, windward, uh, it was my uh, safety uh, safety equipment. So I took the TPS, I, I threw it. I threw it outside, and then I took my phone, for the, the phone of the boat, to send uh, to send a, a text uh, to my to my shore team to 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 tell them that I was sinking, and it was not a joke. <laughs> I'm able yeah. to do good jokes sometimes, but this one is not a good one. Uh, I, I do pretty bad jokes after. <laughs> after. <laughs> and um, and then and then I went. I, I I and it's pretty hard to remember exactly the time it takes. So I, I don't like to, 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 to give a time, you know, because the brain and each time you're telling the, the, the story, you, you may do a new story and I don't want to do that. So the only thing I've got to imagine how, how quick it has been, it's, it's to, to, to remember what I've done. So as soon as I've seen the water going, uh, going, going, going inside the boat, I've been for the TPF, throwing it outside, send, sending the text. And when I, when I when I when I I get my phone back when I went back on loan uh, with the cloud system we've got all now uh, I've seen the text I sent uh, from the boat on my new phone and I I sent uh, the text at uh, 3:46 at 3:47 my short team is answering and I never uh, received uh, the the text so uh, one minute after. I sent the text. The water was above the engine and the batteries system and shut down all, all all the system. So and then I've been outside. I put I I, I put on my TPS, so my uh, my um, uh, survival suit, and uh, and when I'm done with it, I've got the the water above the hatch with everything from inside the boat going out, starting to go out. So it has been quite, let's say, let, let's say two minutes to go inside and get uh, the TPS, two minutes to send a text, you know, it's a bit cold, and two, two minutes to put. So in six minutes, I had the boat with the water at, uh, at uh, 30 or 40 centimeters above the, above the hatch. It, 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 it really quick, really quick. And it, it speaks volumes to how important all the training is and all the safety protocol because like you say everything was there your your survival suit you were you were moving it but it was always in either this place or this place it was that was it um i'm just curious as to if you were moving your survival suit and you're moving your gear did it ever cross your mind during the race i might need this i i i yes yes Bob. Uh, we, if uh, uh, yes, yes, I uh, um, when when you're a sailor, you know, I've been I've been sailing. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm even if I'm still young, I've been sailing uh, for a couple of years. And uh, you, you've got tissue, you've got a mast, you've got a, a killer arm, you've got a, a hole in the hull, you've got, and you, you 
we we all we all know that even if it's not very often, you you may have you may have to go at uh, in the water at uh, at one point. So uh, so so yes. Yeah, so that, that that's why I had a, a bag like that, and I, I think it's very important to do that. There is a few things uh, to to to. Um, uh, um, to learn from that, and I think it's very important to be ready, to be ready, and to know very well what you've got on board, all the safety equipment, because as soon as you have to to use the safety equipment, maybe you won't have the time to check if everything is good and how it works. Yes, yes, it's always that image, isn't it, of somebody needing to set off a flare and having to read how it works first, and you think, no, this is. It's not the or, right time. It's or, or it's by night, and uh, yeah. no, no, even even for the life raft, you know, maybe there is there is always how to use it. Uh, where do you put the floating anchor? Uh, what? How? How much? How? How many hours is working uh, uh, a personal uh, sa sa safety? Uh, 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 because so there is plenty to learn. And, uh, I've done I've done things pretty well, I think, or I wouldn't be there. And there is still to learn as well. So that's it. But well, let's let's talk about what happens next then, because I think for certainly for fans of the ocean race, um, we've had some boats sink. We've had some boats uh, strike land when they shouldn't have done. But it's very rare that boats or crews end up in the life raft. Um, you have to leave your boat now because clearly it's sinking. You have to get into the life raft. Um, You've managed to send this text to your team. Obviously, you have uh, an EPUB. You've got, a, I am guessing, a personal AIS beacon as well. So you have some safety gear with you. What else did you bring with you into the life raft with what could have been a short time or a long time? I mean, at that point, you didn't know. What did you take with you? Yes, it, it, only food and, uh, and, and water. The gr uh, oh, it's uh, on IMOCAS rules. You need two grab bags on board. You need uh, one with uh, food and water, and one with uh, with uh, um, satellite communications, so uh, iridium phone, VHF, and everything. And the grab bag with all communication uh, inside my boat was on the bottom. Uh, for for the center of gravity, you put uh, all the safety, everything you can put down on the monohull, you do it. Yeah. So, but since You've got um, uh, how do you say a lead? You know when you when you need to put something uh, to be sure that you're not uh, moving it. Yes, well, no, no, yes, you have the little safety wire and you 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 clip it round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't remember the name in English. We call that in in, in French or un plomb. So yes, you've got plumbage, a safety wire. Plumbage, plumbage. If, if, you, if you break it, if you break if you break it, uh, if you break it, you you've got uh, you've got hours of penalty. So since you don't want to break it, you put some tape around it, you put some lashing and everything. And as soon as, when, I, when I'm done putting my TPS, my, my survival suit outside, I went back inside with the water, you know, on, uh, on, on the waist. And, and you're, you're trying to cut that under the water, but the, the, the water was still going up. And still it was still going up and my life raft was in the cockpit outside. At one point I said, well, if you've got communication but no life raft, no life raft, there is no point. So <laughs> you have to choose. You know, it's a, it's always a a choice. So it would have it would have been much easier with a satellite phone with VHF, even more if VHF than satellite phone because uh, I had uh, I had uh, boats uh, quite close around me, and uh, but uh, that's it. I had no time and I had to choose between the grab bag and the life raft. Uh Yes. Okay. I, but like you say, the life raft is 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 probably the thing to always reach for. So, you uh, you, you get yourself into the life raft. Um, the the emergency equipment, the the EPIRB, it's been triggered. You know your your message went out to your team. So things are in operation. But you you don't know how long this is this is going to be. How long? was it until you then saw someone coming to get you? Uh, Jean, I think it's three, four hours after, after I went in the, in the life raft, before the night, just before the night. And uh, uh, he, he found me um, thanks, to the, thanks to, the, to the AIS uh, personnel. 
uh, one. The EPUB is definitely not uh, definitely not that uh, accu accurate. Um, I thought it was much more accurate than that. Uh, you've got a big circle of uh, uh, that is going worse and worse each time. So it, for it, it's good for a boat. It's good to, you know when you're looking for a boat with a plane or something. But when you're looking for something from a boat underwater, AIS is much more accurate. So it found it found me. Uh, uh, with with this one, but it was 30 knots, uh, more than five meters of sea state. Uh, going from one a, a life raft to a boat like that, it was if not the right time. And Jean was two reefs, so he had to go. He had to go to three reefs because with two reefs, you know, he was uh, uh, completely uh, uh, maybe 35 degrees of hill. You know, it was impossible for for him to do anything. And then and then since he went for three reefs, um, the, the 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 night. Uh, started, you know, it was it was by night, and um, and then um, what is complicated? Since I had no VHF, me I thought that it would have been he would have been waiting for the daylight to to come back and uh, and, uh, and grab me, and uh, him he was still looking for me because he didn't know I, I, I was safe under the life raft. So what is very difficult when you do something like that is if uh, each 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 people imagine me I was imagining something and him he was. Imagining some something else, so it's not easy to to. So, but uh, after that, I spent yeah something like uh, so three hours on, at all at all I spent eleven hours. So let's say uh, let's say uh, eight hours on in the life drive to wait just before. Uh, just before the the, the delight to because come back. I, I think um, well I'm sure that, that uh, Jean Lacam's story is is fascinating as well. You know he finds you he has to to reef the boat he he loses sight of you it's darkness he finds you again i mean that's that's an uh, incredible in itself but for you um it's three hours you now know that there is a boat in the vicinity um so i'm guessing you're a little bit more relieved and you know okay you know this is good but what do you do with that time i've been in a life raft a few times but only for you know safety courses in a swimming pool, and it's not very comfortable then. I mean, what do you do in a life raft for 11 hours? No, no, it's definitely not comfortable. You know, it's not the best uh, best night. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for a bed, a bed and free breakfast or for Airbnb, uh, don't don't go don't go for that. <laughs> or, or if you want to lose your girlfriend, maybe yeah, it's a good one. But uh, <laughs> um, me, no, no, it's not comfortable. But I, I, to tell the truth, I was quite um, surprised. How um, uh, how the life raft was 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 going, you know, on, on the waves and everything. Uh, I thought it would have been worse uh, than than that. And the the thing is, since the waves were pretty big, it it was starting uh, rolling on the top of the of the of the waves, and it was smashing smashing the the, the life raft sometimes with water going inside, even if uh, if it was closed down with, with a zip. You had uh, it was not fully watertight, and as soon as you wanted to open it to check outside if you were able to see a boat, you, you had uh, 50 liters uh, going going in the life raft. So I've I've been pumping, uh, I've been pumping a lot uh, all uh, all the night long to be sure to have as less as possible water um, in in the life raft in order not to have the the body temperature going uh, going going too much down. So. Um... Okay, so you, I mean, you've got a lot on in 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 your life raft, but when you'd seen uh, Jean Le Cam, um, I, I'm I'm conscious that there is a point where everyone will think, okay, there is another boat next to the life raft, all is going to be fine. But obviously, you have sailed in Imoka, you're an experienced sailor, and you know that Imokas, like all racing boats, are built to go fast. They're not designed to stop, and Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, if you were single-handed in an Imoka and somebody said, park this boat next to the pontoon by yourself, you'd say, this is crazy. I, 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 I know, it's impossible. Right. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not done for that at all. But, um, but I knew that, I knew, um, that the, the wind, we, we had a pressure, if, if you look, I will try to do that, but uh, the, the, the south was there and the pressure was going, uh, was going to the east. It was a pre it was a pressure going from south, and uh, and going uh, going uh, going uh, going uh, north 
east northeast so i knew that if i was stopping and the the idea was to go fast to keep, to stay with the pressure so i knew that since i was stopped um, uh, the, the the sea state and and the wind was increasing for let's say three four hours and then it was going better and better so i i knew that if i if i if, if, if i was able to stay in the life raft without any issue for the for, for the first three four hours after that sea state and wind would have been better and even if if i had if in during the night um i i was not rescued for the day after it, it would have been okay so for, for for me when when i went in the life raft i say okay so it, the, the 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 night is closed as uh, the sea state and and uh, and, uh, and the wind uh, is going better after so let's say that i will spend all the night plus the day and that before the end of the day someone would have uh, would have uh, rescued me so in my head I, I i was there for for 20 24 hours but it's better to, to in the head it's better to say okay let's go for 24 hours and it stops uh it stops after 12 than uh, going for for three and uh, it's you 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 you're there for for 12 hours uh, yeah i can completely understand that um and then, I, 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 like I say, I, I, I think Jean Lacan, I, I, his story will be incredible, and the seamanship to take an Imoka, and, yes. and, 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 and the energy, the yeah. energy, it's an Imoka in five meters with thirty knots. As soon as you do a tack, as soon as you go upwind, downwind, uh, just to take a reef, you know, it's uh, it's not, it's boats um, built, designed. Uh, to go, as you said, fast and to go fast around the world. It's not about to to do, uh, you know, to do a uh, inshore inshore race. So, and, and you know, if you've got to do anything alone, it's it's a lot lot of work on this kind and of. I, and I don't want to. I don't want to be. I, I'm not saying this is a negative, but you know, uh, <laughs> Jean Le Cam as well. He's. I'm trying to think. Is he 51? 51 years. 61. See, there I was thinking, I was thinking 61. I was thinking, no, it can't be 61. You know, this is his fifth Vendée, you know, so it's, it's, it's remarkable. It's really remarkable. It really is. And then he manages to get near you. He manages and he decides, this is it. We're not going to wait. We're going to go now. Let's do it. He manages to get a rope to you. But of course... But the first thing he wanted to, to come along the boat, you know, to, to, to come up, to come up and to um, to slide on me. But he, he missed me from two, three meters. That's why he, he has been able to throw me a line, uh, a line with, uh, you know, we, now we've got, uh, it's mandatory to have uh, like uh, uh, a French fry. Yeah, 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 life ring, yeah. Ring. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, he managed uh, to, to, send, uh, to, send, to send me that. And uh, I, I put it around me inside the life raft but but as you said, as you said, the boat, it's impossible to stop completely uh, an Imoka, even through reefs uh, in 20, uh, 25 knots. Uh, so he was engine on, engine on, um, a throttle full uh, backward. And with the waves, I remember, the, you know, the, the propeller going out of the water, you know, and with the noise, you know, you, you, the noise of the propeller when the, and uh, the smoke, it was by night with the moon perfect it was we, we should have done a movie <laughs> um, a pretty a pretty nice a pretty nice one for a movie so that's why i think we, there is a few things that we will work on uh, for for safety in the future especially for single-ended safety so yeah we have to sort of mention at this point we were talking uh before and then we got sort of cut off what, what happened at your end Yes, I, I was in uh, Les Sables d'Olonne um, for the finish of uh, the, the Vendée Globe. And as you may have uh, seen, <laughs> we, we had a few, a few uh, low pressures. And uh, I were, I were at, uh, at my uh, sponsor place and uh, we had an issue due to the tempest with the Wi-Fi. But, uh, but uh, that's life. Yeah, that, that, that's life. The, the weather is definitely making you work pretty hard. Um, the last thing that we were talking about, you just got us to the moment where you'd managed to climb on board. Uh, yes, we can. So, you, you know, you're out of the life raft, you're out of the, the water, you're, you're out of danger, really. Um, and what I wanted to ask you was, it, it's, it's worth pointing out at that point that Jean Le Cam had been in 2009 in a similar situation and of course had been rescued by team 
PRB. It, it's a really nice example of the fact that when you're out on the water, you know, as sailors, as skippers, you're always looking after each other. Yes, but it's also a fact that is just amazing. Uh, to that uh, uh, ten years ago, uh, you had uh, Jean Le Cam in trouble without a bulb capsized um, uh, at, at the Cape Horn. It was 2009 exactly, because the start of the race was 2008, and it was in 2000, early 2009. And it's just amazing that uh, that in, in 2020 on the Vendée Globe, I, I'm, I'm third. Jean Le Cam is just behind me. And uh, when I when I break my butt in two, it's the same guy that uh, had been uh, rescued by uh, PRB and Vincent Rieu at uh, at this uh, uh, in 2009. It, it it just strange, you know. Sometimes I, I'm I'm an engineer, so you know, you, I like I I like uh, straight things, but sometimes it's complicated to explain. I think yes, I I I I agree definitely with you that even during a race you, you'll have. Uh, you'll have a, a, a boat around you that will come and help you. But what is also strange with this story is to, to see that it was Jean Le Cam, Pierre B in 2009, and uh, Pierre B, Jean Le Cam in, in 2020. So sometimes the story, is, uh, the story is down now. Et puis uh, Jean-Jacques, je suis désolé pour le bateau. Non, non, et et euh... c'est avec du matériel. Rien de grave, Kevin, rien de grave. Ouais, mais j'ai, j'ai, j'ai pas de regret, quoi. Putain, j'ai renforcé grave. le bateau, tout ce que j'ai pu. Kevin, tout va bien, tout va bien, zen, zen. Ouais, D'accord? Ouais, ouais, mais bon. and, and did you get a chance at that point to you talk with, you know, friends or family back back home? Because, of course, you know, with modern technology and everything. Uh, and... Ten minutes, ten minutes after I, I climbed on, 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 uh, on Yes We Can, uh, I, I called uh, my, my wife. And uh, then we had also uh, the... the uh, the organization of the Vendée Globe. Uh, my, my, my sponsor, Jean-Jacques Laurent, uh, was uh, with them. So, 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 no, it's very easy. We, uh, maybe, as you, as you know, we've got, uh, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got very, very good uh, satellite connections now. And it's, oh, I, I would not say cheap, it's still expensive uh, compared to, to, to what we have on land. But uh, uh, com- compared to the, to, to the previous uh, editions, now it's, it's quite cheap, yes. Does it make you more uh, hungry to do the Vendée Globe a second time, having having not managed to complete one? Does it does it make you want to do it even more, like unfinished business? No, no, no. I don't think so. I, I, no, I, I'm not someone like that. I think I, as soon as I start a race, as soon as I start I start something. Something I, I'm, I, I, I try at least to be 100%. And in my head, uh, you know, if any, even if I do a sport with uh, with friends, I will push always to to try to win. So it's part it's part of competition. I don't know if it's good or not. It's part of uh, of me, I think. And uh, uh, no, what 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 will change? I, I think is is that um, I, I'm I have I have more trust in me. In single-handed, since it was my my first two years of, of single-handed, I, I I think I will go for the next uh, 2024 uh, with more uh, with more uh, confidence, uh, with more yes I, I I I'm I I trust more the way I'm able to race single-handed because for it was my second race Vendée Globe was my second race uh, single-handed. <laughs> I had a few uh, uh, questions to know, for example, if it will be okay about about uh, about uh, navigation choices, which are, which are not easy. It's um, it's more that you're alone. So to do choices alone are not you don't do them the same way you do choices when when you are on on a full crew. Uh, there is nobody to discuss with. There is nobody to to uh, uh, to to get into the discussion to be able to choose. Okay, we go for the GFS file or we go for the CEP file or so. And, and that was questions I, I was wondering uh, uh, before the start. And now I think I've got, uh, I've got. Uh, even if I've been racing only one month, uh, one month is still uh, a nice uh, race for compared to all other ones. Not for Vendée Globe, but compared to all of the races, uh, one month it's a, it's a good one. So I think I, I've got more answers, and I, I, I will go for the next uh, for the next Vendée Globe, um, and I, I will trust myself and, and push even harder. 
And as you were saying before, when we when we were speaking earlier, you know, with the mocha, there's still a lot to do, development with the foils and everything else. What about, are you tempted to take, um, if you get the chance, an Imoka and put a fully crude on there and come and do something like the ocean race again as defending, you know, champion to, to see what you can get out of a boat like that fully crude. Yes, for sure. The, 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 the main, the main issue with that is again, the planning. Um, sometimes we, we say that the money is driving our project. Uh, and the first thing that drives our project is the planning. It's not the money. If, even if you've got uh, twice, twice, uh, for sure it helps, but first thing is the planning. If you put the boat one year before the race underwater, even if you've got twice the money, it, it, you, you won't have the most reliable boat and the, most, and the fastest boat. It's impossible. So what is the most important is the planning, and I want to sail uh, single-ended. I, I know that uh, sailing full crew is the best way uh, to, to find out uh, um, uh, which setup are the best one to go fast. And uh, it's also the best way uh, to do a performance uh, tests uh, because when you're single-ended, you, it's so much time uh, to change the sail. And you, you never, depending on the weather forecast, depending on, 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 on the routine you're following and everything, sometimes you don't have the right sail. And to compare everything, it's very difficult. So the, the best way to do it is to go for, for full crew. And, and, and I like that. So definitely, if I've got the, the chance, and it's not having the chance, if, it's, if it fits in a planning for single edit, because again, the main goal, the main goal today is the Vendée Globe. Uh, I have to focus on that. But if I think, uh, and, and if the planning is okay with that, if I think that the best way to win the Vendée Globe is to go uh, through uh, the ocean ice, I will go. Mm. And, and I will like it, because obviously I, I, I like to do it. But, uh, and I think it's also a very good way to get, to get a, a, a reliable boat, because you're, you're pushing much harder in full crew than in the single-handed. So there is plenty of good reasons to go there. The only thing you have to be careful with is the planning. You know, I've seen so many of the single-handed sailors going out double-handed, three persons, four persons. And I think, why? You'd be practicing solo. But now I understand. Of course, you, you, you get the data and it's reliable. It, it's, it's, it's to be sure to have a reliable um, data to be able to compare that uh, uh, on land and to be sure to do the good choices. Sometimes we go on land, we've got plenty of data and we say, oh, okay, look, the, the, uh, the master Jenneker is, uh, is slower than the fractional one. But is it because the sail is faster or is it because, uh, because you were not trimming or because you, were, you, you had to sleep so uh, you, you, were, you were five degrees more down and not as fast? So, but full crew, you're always, always pushing 100%, so it's, uh, it's, it's much easier to compare and, and to do choices about sales and performance. Uh, I've got a couple of questions that, that some of the viewers sent in, and, and you, you've reminded me of one there because uh, one question was, if you were going to build a team for the Ocean Race, if it fits in with your program, you know, if you managed to get the chance to do it, would you take people who had done the Ocean Race last time, teammates maybe, a lot of experience on the 65s and put them in the 60, or would you go around the Vendée fleet and pick the best skippers from the 60? I, 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 don't, see, I don't see that like that. I don't see that like that because I, I think you've got uh, um, uh, plenty of good people. In, for me, it's, too, it's, pre, it's pretty close to dif two different sports. I mean, it's, it's sailing, but you've got good people uh, doing uh, full crew and you've got bad people doing single-ended and uh, the opposite no, but the opposite is, tr is true as well. Yeah. So I, I don't yeah. see that uh, lo looking forward to, to take sing single-handed guys and looking forward. The, I, I've been sailing uh, with, with people that, uh, that have done only full crew racing and I'm pretty sure they would be very good at uh, two-handed or even single-handed. Uh, and, and the opposite, uh, and I've seen very good single-ended sailor that could not be good in, in full crew. So it's, uh, for me, I, I would go for the best people, uh, either if they are coming from uh, single-ended or uh, full crew, or, or from Vendée Globe or, uh, or, or from uh, the Ocean Race. So uh, no, no, I don't see, definitely don't see that like that. I've got very good friends 
uh, that uh, were uh, um, with uh, with Charles and Don Fong uh, from uh, from New Zealand, uh, from uh, uh, from Australia, and uh, they're, they're very good sailors. And I, de I will definitely call them if I had to do the ocean race. And I've got also good friends in, in in France that I will call that I will call as well. I, I think I'll do a mix, and it's very important because uh, the different cultures um, uh, all, always come with with different things and. Mm. And since in, in, in this kind of, 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 of race, it's all about details. If, if you look at the, at the Volvo or the Vendée Globe, huh, uh, the, the difference of speed between the, the, the first and the second, we are not talking about 5%. We are not talking about 10%. We are, we are talking about 1%, 2%, 3% of average speed I'm talking about. So definitely, you, you have to go through details. Mm. Okay, so then the, one last question then from the viewer. Uh, on on the technicalities of it, in terms of the incident that you had, in terms of the fact that your boat broke in two pieces and, and fell down, what do you, what experiences do you take from that in terms of structurally or anything like that? Is there, is there anything that you would do differently, or was it just a, one of those things? I, I think when when you come when you come back from the ocean race, I, I think you, you're the best uh, you're the best uh, sailors uh, uh, in the world. I, I'm sure of that. When you come back from nine months, especially on the two last editions with uh, with one design uh, boats, uh, you've been sailing for nine months. You've done import, offshores, uh, practice. Uh, you're sailing all the time. You, you feel the water, you feel you, you feel the wind, you, you, you understand everything. And you come back from that, uh, I, I think you, you, you've understood plenty of things. Uh, you have understood also where, where, where to be compared to, to a boat, what to, do, what to do with the lift, what to do with the header. And it's all these details. And I, I'm pretty sure when the, one of the reasons I've been uh, fast on the water pr pretty quickly. It's because I've been sailing on multi hulls. On, I, I've done plenty of things. And after two Volvo, uh, you, you can take in, any boats. I don't say that you will be the fastest, but you will be close to the to the 90 or 100% very fast. You, you understand what I mean? You you feel yeah. so well the boat, the wave, the wind, that uh, when you come back from from a, a ocean race, you're, 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 you're part of the best sailors in the world, I think. Okay. I yeah. The, I, I'm not sure it uh, it answers. No, no, no. no. I, I, well, it's, but it's a very interesting point. I mean, I was wondering whether um, I know that you were saying. It, it, no, I mean it's it's just really interesting when you talk about the difference between when you sail for one month, it's a long time, but a year, you know, nine months, it's it's an incredibly long time. But I was wondering about your boat and structurally whether there's anything design wise. With the 60, I mean, obviously there won't be, the, you can't do any testing now, but. It's hard to say. It's hard to say because um, is there any fatigue? I, I think that single indeed, you're not pushing, you're selling two and a half months, but you're not pushing that much uh, than full crew. So mm. maybe in full crew, you, you, you'll have maybe a fatigue inside the boat. Because you're pushing all the time very hard, um, that's the thing. Uh, I, I I think also that even if it's not uh, the, the the first structural part uh, of uh, of of the boat, I, I I would design differently how to to trim the boat for full crew than for single ended. Since as I I, I told you, uh, when you're all under your boat, you're not trimming all the time. On a, on a Volvo, you're trimming all the time. You always have someone, and especially since we'll have uh, automatic pilots on the next uh, ocean race, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, some discussions. No, yes, it's a discussion, but I think when, when, when you look at the number of guys you'll have on board, it will be quite complicated not to have any uh, any automatic pilots, I think. And, yeah. and guys will be trimming all the time instead of being on the, on the, on the helm. Uh, today, automatic pilots are faster than us. So it's a bit sad. Huh? I agree with that. I, I would rather prefer no, no, no. But seriously, I would rather prefer not to have any automatic pilot and continue to 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 
to, to drive because I think it's part of, of a sailor uh, skills to be able to, to drive a boat instead of only uh, driving an automatic pilot. But it's another, it's a philosophical discussion <laughs> more than uh, that. And, and I think they'll be trimming all the time. So the diameter of the sheets, uh, the, uh, the how you, the number of winches and everything must be different for full crew uh, mm -hmm. than for single ended. But for the, in, 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 in my head, um, a boat shouldn't be different in terms of structure for, mm -hmm. for, for single ended or for full crew. At one point, uh, there is no reason why you cannot go at the same top speed single ended than full crew. The, y there is no point that you, you could not push. It. For example, you've got, uh, you, you've got a puff or you've got a scroll uh, with the boat even single ended and you can go at uh, 35 knots. So it should be. I, in my head, it's very hard to understand why a boat uh, should not be with the same structure for single ended or for full crew, except what is a secondary structure. I mean, not the, for example, the, the bottom of the hull should be the same, yeah. exactly the same. Or it means that uh, so you, 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 you'll be able to ease each time you're single ended. It, no, no. Uh, for me, it should be the same. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can I can follow your logic on that one. One last question then, because you are very busy, and I and I know you've got you know. You know oh, it's okay. You, okay I'm happy you, to discuss that. <laughs> you've got a life to lead. Um, was there any? It's it's fascinating to hear you talk now about wanting to do the Vendée Globe. Very passionate to get back out in the water. How much the ocean race has meant to you, and how much you know you can learn from all these different sailings. Was there ever a point? where you, with the experience that you had this time around, having to get into a life raft, was there ever a point where you you um, thought maybe you would stop, take a break, have a have a vacation, or...? No, 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 no reason why. Uh, I mean, uh, when, you, when, when you've got a, a, um, a car... Uh, a car driver having uh, having an accident on uh, F, uh, on a Formula One or, 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 or WRC is he, not is uh, not taking one year vacation. Uh, I, I I don't see why I, I should do that. Uh, I, I to, to tell you exactly the truth, you know, when I when when I was on board Jean Le Cam's uh, a boat, I wonder, I wonder, okay, maybe in the first wave, uh, the, the, the boat will nose dive and I, and I will, and I will uh, cry on the deck, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, 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 uh, it has not been like that. And I was very happy to be on the boat. I was thinking to my next boat, uh, even <laughs> the, and so to say, okay, I will do that like that. And, you know, as soon as I, 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 I sail on a, on a new boat, you know, I, I try to see what is better than the boat I've been selling better or a new ID and to take it and, and to, 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 and to make it better. And for my next boat, it's part of the, there is two ways, two ways to, to, to do a, a, a new boat is to do all brand new, everything and to get only, only new ideas or to, 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 to do a mix of both. Mm. So you take uh, old boats or boats, you know, well, uh, you take that and, and you don't do the same because there is no point uh, to do the same. You do the, you do, you take it and you do it a bit better. And then you add that uh, all brand new ideas. So I, I will go for a new boat. I don't know if I'll be able to to to, to take a new mold or to use a, 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 an existent uh, mold. But I'll see. But I, I'll try to to do new things uh, on on this boat. And I, I'm definitely looking forward to to sail again. It will be in April, uh, even if it's not on a mono hull. It will be a multi hull. But no, 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 no. And my life is uh, sailing or designing boats, so uh, I won't stop uh, uh, this year, and neither the, 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 the year after. Oh, good man. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you very much. Um, like I say, I know you're busy, but it's really nice. Happy, nice. To, happy to talk yeah, with you. Yeah, it's really nice seeing you, um, seeing you in good spirits. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode and keep an eye open on our social media channels where we'll be announcing our future guests and you can submit the questions that you want to get answers to. If you enjoyed this, then subscribe for many more and we'll see you in the future.